So if you've ever seen a diff file before, you might have wondered what it is and what you can do with it. One use for a diff file is to check the difference between two files, but another thing you can do with a diff file is use it to patch. So patching is applying a diff to another file to make those changes. If you've ever used Suckless software before, you might have wondered how to patch it. So first I'm going to do a comparison between diff files and the diff files that Git makes. So if you've ever used Suckless software before, you might have noticed that the diff files look different than if you use the diff command. That's because they are using git diff in order to create those diff files. They're basically just a specially formatted diff file. You can format diff files differently using the options that diff provides, which you can check the manual for if you do man diff. Here, you can specify certain options to format the diff files how you'd like. In this directory, I have an example of two source files that I'm gonna create a diff with. First, I'll be creating a diff and then a git diff. To create a diff, you type in diff, and then the file that you'd like to create the diff against, and then the file that you are comparing it to. So, source. So when I run this command, it'll create a output that shows me the additions that 2.source have made or the changes that 2.source has made. So here we can see that the first file has a hello and the second file has a hello world. So what it does is tells me to remove the hello and put in a hello world. Now down here, it, there is an empty line that it is removing as well, and it is adding these. This is na, bing, bang, bong, and a line in between. Two dot source is what is creating these differences. A way you can deal with this is to redirect the output into a file. So if I rerun this command and then use the output operator, I can create a file called diff. I won't have a file extension because there's no point, and then it'll create the file diff. If you go into that file, then you can have this diff file. You can use diff files to patch stuff, and that's where they become the most useful. Another way you can create diff files is with Git. So Git is a version management system that comes along with a lot of tools that you can use in order to check versioning. And one of these tools is diff within Git. So it is pretty much just the diff file with specific formatting and a index. So if I use git diff, and then I do the same thing I did before with one source, and then what I'm comparing it to, which is two dot source, I can type that in and it'll give me another output, but it just looks a specific way. In this type of diff, it tells me the files that it is checking, and it gives me an index, and it shows me what these symbols mean. So the minuses mean that they are from the first source, and the pluses mean that they are from the two dot source. The first file has a hello, the second file has a hello world. Uh, the first file doesn't have this space here, and the second file has all these additions here. So this is a much more legible diff file, in my opinion. You can put the output of this into a file as well. So I will call it diff git. Another thing that git diffs provide you with are common places in the file. So if I go into the git diff and I go down to line 9 here, you can see that by doesn't have a plus or a minus. This means that it is a common line between both the files. This can be useful for finding um, the general area at which code differs. So what is the point of having a diff file? Well, other than checking yourself, you can use a diff file to patch a program. There is another command called patch. Patch allows you to take one source and patch it with a diff file. So for example, because we created a diff file between one and two, what I can do is take two and put it into one. So I'll show you to have a more clear explanation. So if I type in patch and then the level that the source is on with hyphen P option and one, so that means that it is on this level and that patch doesn't have to look for another directory. And then I type in the file I would like to patch, which is one.source. And then I type in the name of the diff file, diff. If I go into one.source, you can see that the changes have been made. You see that it has removed the original hello, replaced it with hello world. It has added a space here. And it has also added the line, this is the na. And it has added bing, bong, bang. Now if we compare that to two.source, it is exactly the same, which is what we want.
In a git diff, patching is a little different. It's the same command, patch. But this time, instead of having to put both files, what you can do after the p option, you can put the input operator and then the diff file, diff git. And that's all you have to do. If the name of your files differ from the name of the source files in the diff file, then patch will prompt you with the name of the file that you would like to patch. You can either do that or you can manually go into the diff file and change the name of the file that it is patching to the corresponding file in your source. Another way you can patch with git diffs is with git itself. So as mentioned, git has a diff command. Git also has a patch command. Now this patch command is called apply. If you type in git apply and then the name of the git diff, which is diff git, It'll then read the diff file just as patch would and apply the patches. This is because in git diffs, it contains the names of the source files that it will be patching. If this fails, it'll put what it rejects into a file called the source file, and then it'll put the file extension rej. So if we go into the reject file, we can see that this is the diff file once more. This failed because the contents of the first source were so different from the diff file that it could not find a common place to patch it with. If you're patching a program and this happens, unfortunately, the only thing you can do is manually patch it. But the reject file is very useful because if part of the diff succeeds and some of it does not, then it is nice to be able to only see what failed. Lastly, I'll give you an example of patching Suckless software, if that's the reason you're here. So to patch a Suckless program, go into the source directory and make sure that your patch file is in that directory as well. Then you type in patch and then dash p1. You put the input operator and then the name of the patch. In this case, it is the alpha patch. Once you hit enter, it'll patch every file specified in the diff. Make sure that you make clean and install the source after you have applied this patch for changes to take effect. I hope that this helped you understand what a diff file is and how to use them to patch source. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content.